How do you make time for your quilting? Join me today for some ideas on how to make time for your quilting. Hi, I'm Roberta from Quilt Crafters Corner and today I want to talk a little bit about how to make time for quilting. Now if this is something that you like, if you could please like the video and subscribe, that tells me to make more videos like this. So let's get into how do you make more time for quilting. The first thing you need to do is break this down into steps. This is a process that's easy to do and it makes it real doable. Each step can be done over a process of time. It doesn't all have to be done in one day. So let's talk about those steps. Not everybody has the luxury of a dedicated quilt space or studio like some people. So let's find ways to make it easier for you. When you break your projects down into steps, especially if you don't have a dedicated quilt studio, it just makes it easier for you to do. The first step is really planning what fabric you're gonna use, what pattern, or what ideas do you have that you wanna put into your quilt. This can be done at a desk, a kitchen table, a counter, anywhere that you have a little bit of space that you can lay your ideas out so that you know what you're going to incorporate into your quilt. The next step is cutting. Cutting all your fabric at once and pinning your pieces together or labeling them. Another idea is putting them in plastic bags. I've also seen the cutlery sections for your drawers, lay your pieces in that. There's lots of good ideas out there once you have your pieces cut. Sewing is another thing. Once you pull your machine out, you can sew all of your pieces together. It's either chain piecing or flash sewing. Same thing where you're sewing all of your pieces at once. This makes it really easy to put those pieces together. Once you have your pieces together, then you start to put your blocks together. The assembly of the quilt then becomes really easy because border and sashing goes on quickly. I've done several videos on borders and sashings for you to look at. So there are ideas and tips in there on how to get those borders on straight so that you don't have a wavy border. Quilting can sometimes be a really daunting or overwhelming process. It starts simply with just sandwiching your quilt. There's lots of good videos on how to sandwich your quilt. There's the pool noodle technique. There's one by ones that you can use or even PVC pipe to roll your quilt up on and then roll it out in layers. Makes it much easier to do in a limited space. Especially if you don't want to get down on the floor, this can easily be done on a dining room table, a countertop, a piece of plywood on, on sawhorses, anything that you have. Folding tables work really well also. Now, sometimes when we get to the process of quilting, actually quilting, my first way that I did it was with um, just hand tying and I used three st strands of embroidery thread and a curved needle and just did it the distance that the batting recommended. Every batting is different so look what type of batting you have and use the recommendations 
on your batting. And by batting specifically, if you're going to hand tie, that can be tied farther apart, not so closely together. Some battings require closer together, so those really should be machine stitched. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a lot of hand tying. Now, free motion quilting versus stitch in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch can be a little difficult, especially if you're a beginner. It's really hard to say, stay in that seam line. So sometimes if you're still new at this, a quarter inch off that seam, lo seam line and trace your block or trace your pattern that you're doing, your pieces in your block makes it much, much easier to do. You can travel in your in your seam line or your ditch to get to your next block that you want to do. So use off a quarter inch off of your seam line sometimes gives you a really nice effect on the back of your quilt. Now if you're a little more advanced and you do free motion quilting and you do want to try a new pattern or a new uh, design, practice it first. This is my best tip. Practice it first because you don't want to ruin the project you care about. So practice it on something you don't care. Some old fabric that is either thin or doesn't really work, you're not crazy about. Just practice it on that first. It can always be turned into a dog bed, a cat bed, or just a table topper for lack of a better idea. But just practice those designs first before you put it onto your project. You don't want to start a, your good project you care about with something that you haven't tried. Now, the last step is binding, and I have a great video on binding. You can go look that up, but it really helps with how to get that binding on straight and how to get those nice crisp corners in your binding. Most importantly, enjoy the process. This is about putting your passion into something that you are making. It's the pride that you have inside that you've put into every single one of those stitches you put into your quilt. It's that feeling deep inside that you know you care about this project. And this project is something that you love. Knowing the lengthy journey that you've been through from designing, cutting, sewing, putting this together from quilting to binding, this is a labor of love. You've put love and joy and passion into your quilt. Enjoy this process. Enjoy that feeling that you get, that you made that, the challenge of doing that really hard difficult pattern or just the matter of putting it together. This is a process that needs to be cherished, enjoyed. It's a, it's a passion. It's a thing of passion. This is conquering that hard thing. And once you do this, it makes those hard things in life much, much easier to do. How have you used quilting to conquer those hard things in life? Leave me a comment. Let me know. I would really like to know how quilting helps you with the challenges in your life. I want to thank you for watching if you've made it to the end. And please like and subscribe the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Tell me about your quilting challenges. And until next time, Keep quilting.